Hi, I'm Monica and let's talk about the books I read in January. This month I read seven books and I actually did have one DNF, but I do think overall this month I'm quite happy about how many books I've read. And I think this energy comes from the new year and being really motivated. Hopefully I can keep this up throughout the year. Let's just get right to the book that I did DNF, which was The Secret History by Donna Tart. I was expecting that dark academia classic book that people might describe this book as, and I knew going into this book that we're following a group of eccentric college students, and there's murder, a lot of knowledge talk, and philosophizing, like thinking beyond the normal, and of course there's a classics professor involved in this group. I think I did give this book a fair chance, in my opinion. <laughs> I read around 50 pages in and I honestly, I couldn't get through it. I couldn't continue on further. Frankly, I was bored and I wasn't really connecting to any of the characters. And I felt like the plot of truly insufferable characters really, really dragged on in the beginning portion of this book. I did not feel like I had any motivation to continue, so I just DNF'd this one. I think I mentioned this before in another video, but I believe with dark academia books, I'm very particular with which dark academia books that I like. I really do enjoy the ones that are more fantasy blended with a dark academia setting. That's more of my taste, and I think maybe, maybe I will give The Secret History another chance in the future, but let's just get to the books that I actually did finish. And the first book that I did finish was Words of Radiance by Brandon Sanderson. And this book was amazing. This is book two in the Stormlight Archive series. And I rated this one a 5 out of 5 stars. This is actually my second reread of this book. If you don't know what the Stormlight Archive series is about, we're set in the world of Roshar, where the landscape is brutal with its war, politics, and weather. In this world, there's an ancient order known as the Knights Radiant that fell. And the only thing that remains of this order is their armor and mysterious short blades that men use to wage their wars. But oh my gosh, this sequel absolutely blew me away. Even though it was a reread, it felt like I was reading it for the first time since it's been a couple years since I did pick this one up. The depth that we dive into the characters' journeys, the world building, the politics was absolutely amazing. We continue with Shalon and we get a really deep dive into her past. And we also see Kaladin struggling with his new position and also with his confirmation bias about the Light Eyes. We see Adolin getting more comfortable into her role of leadership. And I just want to say Adolin is an absolute sweetheart and I love him. <laughs> and why I mentioned these three characters together, Adolin, Shalon, and Kaladin, is because when they interacted on the page, I was just smiling throughout the entire interaction. Meanwhile, we also have Dalinar who is still having certain trust issues with a high prince. Also, the complexity of the side characters is unparalleled and they bring such depth and they have a important role to play throughout the book and the story. In conclusion, I loved Word of Radiance and I highly recommend the Stormlight Archive if you have not checked the series out. It is very accessible even though it is long. It's like a thousand pages for The Way of Kings and then this one's like a thousand hundred pages but trust me it's so good you'll love it <laughs> and i'm actually currently reading oathbringer right now reading it quite slowly but i like to take my time with these huge books to read because i want to savor it and i'm very much enjoying oathbringer as well and the next book that i did finish was another reread and it is crooked kingdom by lee bardugo and i rated this one five out of five stars this is the second and final book in the Six of Crows duology, and I actually did upload a reading vlog for Crooked Kingdom. If you're interested in that, I will link it down below. So right back into the world of Raqqa, we're following a group of six teenagers who thought to get into a heist, but it didn't turn out the way that they thought it would back in book one, Six of Crows. Now we're following the fallout of that heist, and there's a new enemy in Ketterdiam, and they're going after Kaz and the Crows. Also, there is a new street drug on the streets of Ketterdam and this just caused more enemies to pop up for our characters. Crooked Kingdom was like a reminder of why I absolutely love these characters so much and I really did get like nostalgic feelings because I first read this book seven years ago and just getting back into this sequel, it didn't feel hard to get back into the world and it felt like 
coming back to old friends. The crows, ultimately, they felt very familiar and the love that they show for each other really shown through in this book. The writing still holds out the action sequences, really fun to read, and the cons and the schemes that we do see are very clever and well thought out. And it was really nice to see like some fun cameos from some characters from Shadow and Bone. I definitely cannot wait to dive into the King of Scars duology that I have never read yet, and I'm really excited for season 2 of Shadow and Bone. Next, I read an adult dark academia book, which was Hellbent by Lee Bardugo. This is the sequel to Ninth House, and I read this one 5 out of 5 stars. In this series, we're following Alex Stern, who throughout her entire life, she's been able to see ghosts, and from her rough childhood, she's offered a chance from Yale University to attend as a student, but she has to be able to oversee their secret society's dark rituals and keep so-called dark forces away from these people. And book one was an absolutely intense read. <laughs> I actually do have a reading vlog for Hellbent as well, and if you're interested in that, I'll link that down below. Reading Hellbent was a smoother journey compared to Ninth House because we already have a world that is grounded and stable that we learned and built in Ninth House. We continue to learn about the different magics being used in the secret societies and how Alex's abilities continue to give her an edge. Alex has taken on a more leadership role. We have Dawes who is like a mother hen and really smart scholar. Turner is still the reluctant detective who is roped into this and we have Darlington who is now dealing with his, let's say, darker side. <laughs> Truly, it felt like I was watching the TV show Supernatural with a group of characters who come together to hunt down monsters and demons. It had that like road trippy type of vibe and I very much love that dynamic that grew throughout this book. Overall, Hellbent is a wild journey down into the underworld with a very strong protagonist who isn't scared of ghosts or demons. Although Alex is an unlikable character, she does have redeeming qualities and she's not completely selfish. And we have a group of unlikely friends who come together to rescue their gentleman of Lethe. In conclusion, I'm very much excited for book three. I cannot wait for it. and. Let's hope it comes out soon. Next, I read volume 10 of the Saga graphic fantasy series and I rated this one a 4 to 5 stars. This is a fantasy sci-fi graphic novel series and we're following a small family who are from two different worlds trying to survive in a warring universe. Volume 10 still continues with the series graphic content with violence and sexual content as well. So if you're interested in the series, just be aware of that. It was very easy to dive back into the world of Saga and with its wars, politics, family, love, and travels throughout the universe. The only thing I really have to say is like Volume 10 has shocking twists and I really hope that we can find a happy ending for our characters. The next book that I did read was another Doc Aki Damia book and it is Babel by R.F. Kuang and I rated this one a 4 out of 5 stars. I would describe Babel as more of a historical fiction with some fantastical elements in a dark academia setting. So a quick summary of what Babel is about. In this world, there's power in translations and with words being lost in translations, there's magic found there. And in this world, it's crafted into silver bars. We're following Robin, who is a Chinese orphan and is being raised by the mysterious professor in order to enter Oxford University's most prestigious institute of Babel, which is for translation. However, in Britain, their imperial might is wanting to start a war with China over opium and silver. Babel really is a book that takes you on a journey, an intense journey of heartbreak, fight, and humanity, and we're set in 1830s England. We follow Robin from his youth and into his years at Oxford. At Oxford, Robin quickly develops a strong bond with his cohort and his friendships continue to grow from there. And I really like these types of friendships that you do find during your studies, and it's like the type of friendship that persists throughout the highs and lows of academia and that can persist after college. We see Robin experience racism, discrimination, and the effects of colonialism, and we also see him join a student resistance and how that turns out for him. This part of Babel was very much in your face and it like spoon-fed you the messages that Arf Kwong wanted to put out. 
but Arf Kwan did a wonderful job at showing the perspective of POCs living at a time where POCs were being treated horribly. The main issue I had with people was that it read a lot like a textbook. Don't get me wrong, like I'm fine with that at times, but there's like endless lectures on linguistics and languages and it was very interesting, but it felt very long-winded to me. And it made it hard for me to immerse myself fully into the story. And I feel like some part of like the message of like, you know, colonialism, racism, discrimination, like those messages were very, very clear throughout the book. But I felt like the idea of the dark academia setting and like the fantasy element of the silver bars were like an afterthought, if that makes sense. And also like the footnotes, that was kind of a part that I just skipped over. But with Robin as our protagonist, he is a quiet one, but he's very, very proficient at languages and he grapples with changes within his morality. We see major truths and betrayals hit Robin and that results in a very sad ending. I didn't really like the building tension and unrest that happened at Oxford and that buildup was very nicely done. It also added to how a possible resistance will have losses and wins. Overall, I do think Babel was a good read, but I felt like some parts could have been less academia-like. Next, I did want a lighter read and I ended up picking a adult fantasy romance and I picked up A Fate of Wrath and Flame by K.A. Tucker and I rated this one a 3.5 out of 5 stars. First, I thought that this book was an urban fantasy book, but we quickly follow our character, Ramira, into a fantastical world with elves, gods, elemental magic, and doppelgangers. And I think it's best for you to find out what this book is about, like more details about the entire plot when you read this book because it does play out nicely on the page. There are tropes of the Chosen One, Marriage of Convenience, and Enemies to Lovers, the world building plot and the romance were all very much slow burns to build up but it was very addicting to read. Ramira as our main character, she is very resourceful and quick to learn on her feet within this new world but I did think that she could have used her mind a little bit more when she was trying to escape her rooms in one part of the book and also to gain more knowledge on her own because there is a library scene in this book as one would expect in a fantasy world. This library scene was very much delayed and I was a little bit frustrated at that. The love interest is very broody but there is more to him than you would first realize. The chemistry and the tension really did build up and I did like their relationship in the end. I very much love the concept of parallel worlds but I felt like there was so much info dumping in this book that it kind of threw me off. Besides from that, I really did enjoy the mention of elves and how there was a dark twist to them. Overall, I was very pleased with my first book by K. Tucker. Next, I picked up These Twisted Bonds by Lexi Ryan and I rated this one a 3 out of 5 stars. This is the sequel to These Hollow Vows and the end of the duology. This is a YA fantasy romance. We're following Brie, who is a thief, a good lockpick, and stealing from the rich in order to make rent and to live in her aunt's basement with her little sister Jazz. One night, a theft goes very much wrong and Brie ends up running to the fairy world and she is now in the center of warring fairy courts of the Unseelie and Seelie and at the center of the affections of two fairy princes. We continue straight from the end of book one. Brie is caught in a situation that she didn't expect to be in after placing her trust in someone she cares about. Still in the midst of a love triangle, she is still trying to struggle with her feelings with between choosing Finn of the Unseely and then we have Ronan of the Seely. And I honestly did really like the romance aspect of this book with the very very deep bonds being formed and how my love interest got picked in the end. <laughs> so I was happy about that. We also delve deeper into the world of the Fae with learning about their politics, history, and magic. However, I felt like there was a lot of plot and it felt like the author was rushing through so much plot but there wasn't enough page space and maybe this series could have been a trilogy instead of duology. I was ultimately satisfied by the ending as well as at a surprise redemption. If you do want a fantasy book with 
fae, romance, love, and magic. I really do highly recommend this duology. It's really fun and quick to read. So those were all the books that I read in January. I hope you enjoyed this video and comment down below if you read any of these books or what you read in January yourself. I hope you all have a wonderful day and don't forget to give me a huge thumbs up, hit that subscribe button down below, and ring that notification bell to not miss any future uploads. And I'll see you all in my next one.